be able to stand up this morning and, and stand behind the pulpit and preach the word of God like I'm called. I appreciate the good Lord giving us the opportunity uh, to do that. You just be much in prayer. As Derek said before, that I get myself out of the way and y'all will just uh, hear the good Lord talking through me. Don't hear anything I say to just see him working through me. But uh, so James chapter 1, we're going to begin reading in verse 19. We're going to read through verse 27. And, uh, this is a, uh, you know, it goes right along with the Sunday school lesson, uh, what we talked about in Sunday school, but uh, the, my Bible, some of your Bibles has a little heading over the passage of the verses, mine does, and uh, the heading over this passage here, it says, hearers and doers of the word, and, and I believe, you know, that falls into, you know, and I say this a lot, but I truly believe that, you know, uh, all the messages I've preached lately have fit just right into our society today with just, just like a glove and things going on. But uh, James chapter 1, beginning with verse 19, the Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteous of God. Wherefore, lay upon all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled go before God, and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted, from the world. As I began to study this last night, I was sitting around studying, and you know, I began to think about the old saying. As you read verse 19 there, it says, Every man swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. And I began to think about the old saying, and you know, a lot of people kind of find it funny, but you know, God give us two ears and one mouth, you know, and one tongue, and therefore we should be swift to hear and slow to speak. And you got double the, double the, uh, things to hear with and you do the things to speak with so we ought to use them that way and in that order. And you know it talks about hearers and doers of the word. And we gotta be able to hear the word before we can do the word. You know, there's talk, you know, you know, you buy something at the store, and I, you know, I know it's a running joke with everybody you know that we ain't gonna use the instructions, you know, we'll just go ahead and put it together without the instructions. You know, men don't need no instructions, you know, that's what everybody says. But uh, this is instructions you need. And half the time when we put stuff together without the instructions, it don't turn out like it's supposed to go. You know? and, and when you try to put stuff together without hearing the instructions God's given us, it's not going to turn out the way it's supposed to turn out today. You know, if you flip over there, you know, slow to wrath, you know, wrath is anger. And that's, the, that's the, just another word for anger. And you know, a lot of times today, society is Miss Carol talking in Sunday school. There ain't a whole lot of kindness in the world today. You know, she said that uh, the world today is just, you know, just uh, got away from kindness. And we talk about witnessing the people. And she said that's one way you can witness the people is just show them the kindness of God. You know, and, and one way to do that is you got to be slow to wrath. You can't get mad just over a, just a split second. Somebody tells you something or look at you the wrong way or they just walk in the room and their mood strikes you the wrong way. You don't need to get mad at them just that quick, you know. And uh, you know, go to verse 20, it says, The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. You know, that just about puts it just as plain as it can get there. You know, it tells you, you know, the wrath of man, if you're angry down here on earth and you can't work the true righteousness of God like you're supposed to, you know, we can't be workers of God and, and fulfilling God's uh, word. If we're busy getting mad at other people here on earth, we got to get our anger out of us. We got to, you know, lay apart our anger. And, you know, verse 21 there talks about lay apart the filthiness and the superfluity of naughtiness. On, and, and we just got to lay all those things away and receive the meekness, the engrafted word. And the engrafted word, that's according to the Bible, you know, the engrafted 
If you go back to the Hebrew word, if you go back and study it, it means to implant. You know, this is the implanted word, and you know, God has implanted this here for us to use and for us to read. And you know, we should receive that engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. You know, and the, the filthiness and the naughtiness of this world. And believe you me, and you can turn on the radio, and you ain't gonna take my word for it. You know, when you leave here today, you, know, you just go out there in your car and you hit the scan button on your radio and the first station it stops after you just listen to what's on that radio station. Right. And I guarantee you there'll be some filthiness or naughtiness or something come up on one of them stations. If, if it just so happens it lands on a Christian station to start with, if you hit the scan button again, the next thing it lands on won't be so nice. I can just really promise you that. Uh, you know, the, the ratio to Christian things and worldly things has got way out of balance. You know, in, in the world today, the, the filthiness and the naughtiness of the world you know, has, has took over, has tried to take over the, uh, the Christian uh, morals that our country used to have. And I believe, you know, if we're ever going to make it as a country, and we got to get back to the Christian morals we used to have years ago. And, you know, it talks about verse 22 there. We're supposed to be doers of the word, not hearers only, you know. And, and uh, that, you know, I, I said before, you got to hear the word before you can do it, and you do. But once you hear the word and hear what you're supposed to do, then it's time for us to go do it. You know, we can't just, you know, uh, hear the word preached or you study the word or whatever God lays on your heart to do and He tells you to do it. You hear Him tell you to do that, then you just sit still and not do nothing. That's not the way to do it. You know, it tells us if we do that, We'll deceive our own selves, you know, and deceive is a, and you, you look it up, it's a ton of different definitions, but it basically means to trick, to lie to your own self if you hear the word, but don't do what it says for you to do. And, you know, it says up there, you know, uh, verse 22, be doers, not hearers. And then verse 23, it says, if any hearer of the word is not a doer, he's like a man holding his face in a glass there, you know, and, and, and that's a, and if you go out there and look in the glass, it's referring to a mirror here. And if you go look in the mirror, you know, you're going to see your face just as it is now. You know, you're going to go in there and you're going to look at yourself. But looking at yourself is not going to get anything done standing there looking in the mirror. You know, you got to get out there and you got to work and you got to do what God's have you to do. And, you know, verse 24 talks about uh, but holdeth himself and goeth his way straightway and forgetteth what manner of man he was. You know, and and when you get saved and you know, we go out there and we go the straight way, we're supposed to get what we forget where we come from. You know, the Bible says old things have passed away, all things become new. And it says we're supposed to forget what manner of a man we was. I don't care if you was the biggest drug addict or the biggest alcoholic, or if you was on the death row in the prison for murder, I don't care what you was at. When you get saved, you know, God forgives you for them sins, and it tells He throws them far as from the east is from the west, right. you're never to remember them again. So why should we try to look back and remember them again? You know, if God don't remember them, you know, what good does it do us to remember them besides call us grief here on earth? You know, go back up to 22, that's what we that's what we get caught deceiving ourselves with. We try to go back to our past, you know, and we know, well, I got saved, you know, but I, I still done a whole lot of wrong, God. You know, I'm not going to go, and I, you can't call me to preach. I was a murderer years ago. I can't be no preacher. No, you, I can't teach no Sunday school class. I used to be the biggest alcoholic in DeKalb County. You know, well, yes, you can. Because, you know, I, I'm not sure where it's at, but it says in here where, you know, when God calls you to do something, He will prepare you for the task at hand, you know, and, and he will give you the tools you need to complete that task. He's not gonna, you know, to tell you to go out there and do something, not give you no tools to do it with, you know. And you know, it's about like some of these things that when you buy stuff and it's stored, you gotta put it together. You know, Christmas coming up, a lot of things gonna have to be put together. Most of them, at least one thing, has an odd size wrench in there that they send the wrench with it because it's such an odd size you wouldn't find it nowhere else. They didn't send it with you. They give you the tools you need. To put that product together. You know, as a Christian, God gives us the tools we need to put stuff together and do His will here on earth. And, and verse 25 talks about whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and can continue therein, being not a forgetful bearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. You know, the Bible tells us here that. 
It was the perfect law of liberty, you know, referring to the Bible again, referring to God's Word and, and God's master plan. If we look into this and find out what we need to do and what God wants us to do, we continue therein. We continue to work for Him, being not a forgetful hearer. You know, and that's the point. That's the big point right there. I want to stop for just a minute. You know, I, you know, you can ask Katie. I'm a pretty forgetful person myself. You know, I, I forget a lot of things. A lot of us do. We're supposed to be, you know, when God tells us something, we hear something in the Word, we're not supposed to be a forgetful hearer. We're supposed to remember that. We're supposed to put it in our mind and, and lock it in our mind, so to speak, I guess for lack of a better term there. And once we do that, continue there in God's Word, He will bless us for the deed we do in His uh, in His sight. You know, and... and uh, a lot of people will take that verse and, and they will kind of twist it around to the point of, well, I've done what God wants me to do. I've, I've talked to this person. I've witnessed to this person. I've, you know, I've directed saying like He wants me to do. Now I'm waiting on my bank account to have a million dollars reading there when you pull up your phone on your app, you know, for your uh, online banking. You know, God never said He was going to bless you in monetary value here. He just said, bless you in your deed. And, you know, that blessing you in your day may be simply giving you the good feeling that somebody you talk to come to know Jesus because you talk to them, you know. And, it, and a lot of people think when Jesus says in here all throughout the Bible, He's going to bless us, we try to take that as, as worthly or monetary things, but that's not what He's meaning here. And you know, in verse 26, it said, If any man seem to be religious, and rather not his tongue, but saveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. And, you know, this is a big, a big thing here. You know, it talks about if any man seem religious, you know, if I, if I go out and witness to people and, and tell them, you know, that Jesus loves them and I go out and do everything I'm supposed to do, you know, and they think, well, you know, Jed's a pretty good guy. He seems like a religious guy. He seems like a Christian guy. But I don't put a bridle on my tongue. My religion's all in vain. You know? and that's the big thing today. We, we like to run our mouth, you know. A, you know, and then it goes back to the very first verse, talking about being slow to wrath. You know, being slow to wrath, you got to put a bridle on your tongue because a lot of times, you know, what gets the anger started is our mouth. You know, like I said before, God give you one mouth and one tongue and two ears to listen with. And uh, you know, when God tells you something to say, you need to say what God tells you to do. But then when uh, God gets done with you, we don't need to ramble on about our own problems, ramble on about you know things in our own life. You know, we just go out there and do what God tells us to do. And, you know, and hush. And, and, and uh, I think it was Bob Pruitt told Byron when he first answered the call to preach that uh, he said, I'm going to give you a word of advice. When you get up to preach and then you get up and then you speak up and then you shut up. You know, when God gets done with you, you get up, you get down right there and don't try to stand up there and ramble on. You know, I, and I firmly believe in that, that when God gets done with me, I'm not going to ramble on and get down, I'm going to be done, you know, but... Uh, too many times today we want to want to go on out there in the world and we'll witness to somebody. We'll be witnessing to one person and then five minutes later we'll be in a conversation with them putting another person down who lives down the road down here because right. of how the yard looks or, or putting somebody down because of how they didn't mow the yard right. They didn't trim them trim trees a whole lot more than they trimmed them last year, you know. <coughs> we got to be careful to bridle our tongue because we deceive our own heart. The man's religion is in vain. You know, and that religion's in vain. That just means your religion's no good. Just to put it just as simple as it can be, you know, I believe that's the way it will be put, just simple, and it tells us that our religion's no good. And no matter what we do, if uh, we go out there and don't ride with our tongue, it's all in vain. It's no good. You know, talking about verse 27 there, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father. And this gives us some things to do here. You know, it, it gives us some... Uh, <coughs> I guess you could say task to do. And it says to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. And that means go, go out and visit the elderly people, you know, when they can't come to church. Go out and visit the shut-ins. Go out and visit the people that's, uh, you know, go out and visit the children that's lost their parents. You know, and, and it says fatherless and widows here, and I, and I believe they just use that as an example. We need to go out and visit and witness to everybody. Don't just go out here and say, well, you know, you're not a widow or your father's still alive, so I'm not going to talk to you today. That they, I believe they were just using that in an example. 
And if you study the uh, Word of God, a lot of this in here, they use examples, but it applies to a whole lot of other things than just the words used in that specific verse. And it talks about keeping himself unspotted from the world. And we talked about this in Sunday school. Miss Carolyn talked about it. You know that, <clears throat> I believe it, Miss Carolyn, that when uh, unchristian, non-Christian person or unbeliever figures out you're a Christian and you try to witness to them or they figure out that you're going to later in the church or, or any position in the church, they're going to watch you a whole lot closer on how you live your life. You know, they're going to say, well, you know, he, he witnessed to me, he wants me to be saved, so he's a Christian. I'm just going to watch how he lives for the next week or so, and then I really know if I need to be saved or not. And if you witness to them, then they see you down at the bar next Saturday night watching the football game, and they're, you know, drinking you a couple of beers, and they're going to say, well, you know, what's the point of me getting saved? Because he's doing the same thing I'm doing now. You know, what, what point do I need to change? You know, if you go out there and you witness this person, and they see you on the street the next day, and you out there just <coughs> cussing up a storm with them, talking about so and so down the road, then they ain't gonna want to change, right. because you ain't showed them no thing they can change into. You hadn't shown them what God can change them into, and that's the way of keeping us unspotted from the world. And I'm not telling you to go out here and you have to be perfect, because that's impossible. There wasn't but one person that ever walked, walked this world that was perfect. That's right. There'll never be another one. We need to be careful, you know, and keep us unspotted from the world. That goes back to, to bridling our tongue. It goes back to we've got to be a hearer of the word, then a doer of the word and word and you know, and not just stand there and look at ourselves in the mirror and you know well, what am I supposed to do now and where am I supposed to go next, you know. Talking to yourself in the mirror ain't gonna get you nowhere, you know. That mirror's not gonna tell you anything to do. It's not gonna give you anything to listen to. It's just stand down and look at yourself. You can stand and look at yourself in the mirror all day long. You won't get nowhere. You know, we need to listen to God. Get in the Word. Read the Word. And you know, I said this in Sunday school too, that, you know, talking about fasting and stuff. Fasting, you know, don't, I believe I've said this before, but <coughs> fasting don't just point to food. A lot of people think it does. And, and it can very well point to food. But, but uh, you know, when Fasting can be anything that you takes up time in your life. You can fast from it. Right. You know, when you if you want to get your phone and look at Facebook for 45 minutes, why don't you lay your phone down, and pick up your Bible, and read it for 45 minutes, and see what God can show you in there. You know, if you want to turn on the TV and watch TV for an hour and a half before you go to bed at night, why don't you get your Bible and turn on the lamp beside the bed and read the Bible there for an hour and a half before you go to sleep at night? I guarantee you, you'll rest a whole lot better than you would watching that TV before you went to sleep. I promise you that much. You know, and then you get in the car and you don't want to listen to the radio in the car and, and put your music on your headphones going down the road. Why not just sit in there and, and just have your little conversation with God going down the road, you know? Amen. And, uh, you know, and by no means am I telling you to get in the car and start down the road, bow your head and close your eyes, you know? When I, because I, that just won't work out real good. You know, when you get in there, you can talk to God just like me and you talk with your eyes open and paying attention to where you go. And I promise you, He'll listen just as good. Uh, you know, and, and, and I, I know that sounds silly and funny, but I've heard that excuse before. I really have. You know, talking about talking to God in the car. And, well, I can't talk to God in the car because I can't bow my head when I pray. You know, yes, you can. God hears your prayers. Yeah. He tells us He hears our prayers. No matter where you're from, He'll hear it. And I'm about done, Miss Carolyn. If you want to come get a song, you're going to play one on CD player, whatever, that's fine. Uh, but I'm going to leave you with a thought this morning as I close. And that thought being, are you a hearer or not a doer? He's going to play one, Miss Carolyn. He said he's going to play a song. I'm sorry. But uh, are you a hearer of the Word? Are you a hearer and a doer? You know, and you can't be a doer without being a hearer. Maybe you sit here and you say, well, I've been doing what God wants me to do. I've been doing what the Bible tells me to do. But have you really heard what He wants you to do before we take off out there and do it? So you got to... It works both ways. You have to hear it and then do it. You can't hear it and not do it. You can't do it and not hear it. It's the order it has to be in. And uh, you know, be slow to anger this week. And I know, you know, and, and talking about anger, you know, Black Friday was last Friday. And I just bet you, and I didn't go Black Friday shopping. And, uh, you know, I probably never will. I don't care nothing about it. But, uh, 
I guarantee you there's some fights that went on in some of these stores around here in Black Friday. You know, people walk up and go, well, I got the last TV they had on sale. You know, well, I wanted that TV. You know, then they'll, they'll have people pull guns and shoot each other and, you know, getting just all out fights in Walmart over a TV, you know. And if a TV's that important to you, why don't you save up enough money and go buy it yourself and quit fighting somebody for it on Black Friday, you know. And, or, you know, they put in the effort to get there before you did. Why try to take it away from them? You know, that's what we need to be like. We put in so much effort to go Black Friday shopping, put in so much effort to get there before everybody else does, you know, put in so much effort to be the first one, you know, to log in on this and this and that and other. Why don't we put that much effort into listening and doing what God will have us to do, you know, in the Bible today? And I know, as I've said before, and I'll probably say it a million times again, but this world is, you know, is went into the technological technological scene of things and um, you know everybody wants to do everything from their phone everything from their computer and everybody wants to get online and those people that you know my aunt and there's no telling how many hours she spent online last year ordering Christmas presents online she just sat there at the computer for hours and hours you know searching a hundred different websites trying to find the same same product at a different price you know and, and she tried to find two or three cents difference you know she put that much effort into trying find two or three cents difference in a product, you know, but do we put that much effort in sitting down and trying to find what God wants us to do out of His Word this morning? Right. If you would stand with me, He's going to play a song. If anybody has anything, or, uh, you need to come pray this morning. Be glad to pray with you. The Bible says today can be the day of salvation. And, uh, I'm going to beg you today that if uh, you don't know Jesus or you cannot look back at a time that you uh, was saved, don't leave here today without making it right. I promise you, you won't regret it. And I promise you that and don't worry about nobody making fun of you. Because they make fun of you. 